Offering tree includes a number of email marketing features. In order to access this, go ahead and click on email marketing under communications. And when this page opens, you'll notice that there are four tabs on the top here, newsletter, roster messages, automated emails, and lead generator settings. Each of these different email marketing features can help you to grow your email list and to grow the number of contacts that are part of your offering tree site. So I'll describe how to use the newsletter feature in this video, but if you click on each of these other tabs, you'll find videos that explain these other features in detail. So if you want to get started with using the newsletter feature, click Create Newsletter at the top. You'll notice that you need to define your audience. This says recipients. I can choose all of my students and followers. So this is everyone that has interacted with me, signed up for the newsletter, signed up for a course, or messaged me. Or I can select a subset. So this could just be, let's say, for my intro to coaching course clients. If you're sending out uh, general announcements or trying to uh, increase engagement with a special promotion, I'd recommend that you send it out to all students and followers. If you have a more niche message, something that is more targeted, then you might think about segmenting it based on your offerings. You can set the date and time that you want to send it. So in this case, I could have it be today's date or I could have it sent out in the future, let's say on Wednesday. You can set the time. Generally speaking, early morning before work, lunch hour or after work are good time since people are likely to be checking their email at that time. You can adjust the time zone if you need to. And then you can add in the subject of your newsletter. So in this case, I'll talk about a new memberships feature that I might be releasing for my site. And then I can go ahead and start typing the content of my newsletter. And once I've started to add this content, I can change it. So if I wanted to change some of the text, I can select it. I can make it a title. I can make it a header if I want to format the newsletter in different ways. I can add in italics, bold, underline. So a lot of different formatting options. There's also bullets and lists and then also hyperlinks. And so to access, again, you just select the text that you want. That'll pull up the menu and then you can start editing it with some of these rich text features. If you want to add an image to your newsletter, then notice as soon as I go down to a blank line, there'll be this little circle with a plus sign in it. If I click on that, you'll notice that it brings up the option to add an image. In this case, I'll put in an image of a leaf. And let's say that I want to adjust that. I can do that by clicking on this little gear icon. I can change the size of that image just by dragging the slider. I can have it be left align, center align, or right align. It's really um, you have a couple different options. And if I wanted to reset it back to what it was, I just hit reset at the bottom. But once I like how it looks within the format, I can go ahead and hit save. And then if you notice that if you click on right below the image, it'll give you the option to add a caption. So in this case, picture of a leaf. And then I would go ahead and hit return and that'll bring me back to the next line. And then I can continue to write my newsletter. Uh, here is the info about my new memberships. So in this way, you can start to create uh, a really rich uh, newsletter and um, format it how you like, adding in pictures, adding in captions, things like that. So you can also add attachments. If you'd like to add a PDF or uh, some other file, all you have to do is click in here and it'll give you an option to select the files from your computer. Once you have a draft of what you like for your newsletter, make sure that you save the draft. Also, I'd recommend that if you're writing a longer newsletter, that you compose it outside of this editor because if there happens to be an internet issue or your internet goes down, you don't want to lose all of that text. So you might draft it in a notepad or somewhere else on uh, you know, Microsoft Word or some other program that you're using, and then you can paste it in here and do the final formatting. Uh, it's just a way so that you don't lose some of your work if there happens to be an internet connection issue. So make sure you hit save as a draft. And then if you'd like to preview uh, this to see what it looks like for yourself, you can hit the preview button and you can send it to yourself. So you'd enter your address, you'd hit preview, and then you'll see exactly what your newsletter looks like. Just note that it won't include the unsubscribe 
uh, on the bottom of it because you're putting in your own email address. Any emails that go out to your clients or your students have that unsubscribe option um, at the bottom as is required by can spam and other laws. But just know that if you're getting a preview of it, uh, it doesn't include it because you're entering your own email address. So we know that you don't wanna opt out of seeing that preview. And then once you're ready and you're satisfied with the newsletter, you can go ahead and click on this send and notice that it'll schedule it to be sent on this date because I put it to a future date. There's also this option to turn the newsletter into a blog. So this can be really handy if you've written a long newsletter, but you also wanna make sure it gets posted to your site. So if I check this option, it'll take me to uh, the blog page as soon as I hit send. And that means that the newsletter is scheduled and it'll copy this content. So let me show you what happens. If I go ahead and hit send, copy the content, it says the newsletter is updated and then it immediately opens uh, the blog page. So now I'm under the blog fun functionality of Offering Tree and it's copied the content over so I can make this into a blog post on my site as well. So that can be really handy if you want to have this information available on your site, not just in uh, a newsletter that you send out to your clients or students. So that's kind of a brief overview of how to use a newsletter feature, and uh, we look forward to seeing all that you have to offer.